Hey everybody, Martin from Quad Spinner here, and today we're going to be discussing the thermal node. Thermal 2 is a node that controls purely thermal erosion. Now, thermal erosion is something that happens when there is differences in temperatures in a climate. So you can think of daytime and nighttime temperature shifting or even seasonal temperatures. It is something that breaks apart terrain by the rock expanding in the heat and shrinking in the cold. It can also be exacerbated by water getting into the cracks and then expanding as it freezes, which then makes the rock break apart even faster. This kind of erosion is often seen in mountain ranges like the Alps or the Rocky Mountains and it causes a lot of cliff formation, a lot of talus flows, and it will kind of break your mountain down from every side. And we're just gonna cover all the settings and then and further on, I'll give you some examples of use cases. So we're just gonna add a base thermal two node here. And this is our bedrock, our base terrain. We're gonna add this thermal two right here. And let's talk about sliders. Duration is of course the duration of the simulation. If we increase this, the effects of the simulation will be enhanced. Strength, very simple. It is the strength of the actual erosions. So if we turn this up, we'll just see more strong effects from the erosion happening without a longer build time. Anisotropy is very interesting. It is basically controlling the level of irregularity of the thermal stress that your mountain is receiving. So when your mountain is receiving a very regular thermal stress, it will maintain a lot of the details that the terrain has. However, when the stress is more irregular, it focuses more on locations of interest like rocky outcrops and that kind of stuff, which causes them to be eroded more as there's more thermal stress happening in that area, basically eroding your terrain until there's not much interesting shape left and it's actually very equalized. The best way to showcase this is when I remove all the sediments. So let me just turn that up to one and let's turn off the anisotropy. As you can see, major details like cliffs and stuff as we see in the base shape here, will still be preserved. Uh, the mountain is still somewhat the shape that you uh, kind of recognize from the underlying node. If we turn it all the way up, this is what we get. The mountain has been absolutely eroded. It's just completely chipped off every angle. And uh, what we get is a very smooth, sharp, interesting shape. Uh, you would probably keep the anisotropy slightly lower so you maintain your shape. Um, and then we can actually play around with some talus. Now the talus is not directly connected to the simulation like erosion two. It is actually more of an added sediment on top to just have artistic control over these flows. But down below, I will show you a combination of thermal two together with erosion two to get very realistic talus flows. So the talus we get from the thermal two node is actually pretty cool because we can easily art direct the uh, slope angle and stuff of this talus. So if I turn this down, it will lay down very flatly on the terrain, turning it very rounded as it's just piling up and kind of rolling off. If I turn it a bit higher, it will be a bit more sharp as it's more angled, as you can see. The best way to control this is by removing a little bit of it, especially if you are really using a higher duration and higher strength of the erosion, um, because at that point you're starting to build up a lot of talus flow, which might cover a lot of cool details. So if we remove a bit more, we can turn up the angle to something like 60. And now you're getting these really cool talus flows and you'll see some cliff detail appearing. We wanna save a bit more of that. Let's turn the anisotropy down. And then we arrive at the last setting right here, which is the feature scale. So the simulation is looking at your mountain and at a feature scale of 25, all the features that are smaller than 25 will kind of be washed away by the erosion. However, if we turn it down, we preserve a lot more of the base shape because a lot more of the smaller details are kind of are kind of inhibiting the simulation from uh, happening there. But I think a sweet spot uh, is often like something like 10, uh, which would preserve quite a bit of detail as you can see in the clips, um, but still give you cool talus flows coming down. If you watch the Snowy Peaks tutorial, you'll see that I actually used this kind of technique to create cool, very sharp, uh, high altitude snow, which you know is something that Thermal 2 does really well. So now that we're done looking at all the features, we can see how it affects a mountain like this. Let's see, if we plug this in, you can see that we're getting a really cool, um, very recognizable shape. And this is why I say kind of thermal too, is that classic mountain shape, where if you think of a mountain icon, in a sense, you would just think of kind of triangular shape, right? That's like the universal mountain uh, shape. And I think that's basically what thermal two can really give you. It can give you very, uh, 
very eroded shark peaks with a cool talus fall off at the bottom. So now let's look at other ways of thermal, right? So we have the thermal two. Um, we have an example here. I'm using thermal two with a slope inhibition. So the heavy slopes like the cliffs are only 50% thermal eroded compared to the rest of the terrain. And that gives us this kind of shape, very cool, you know, rocky peak with big talus flows combined with some erosion too for the hydraulic erosion. And you have yourself a very easily art directable shape here. Now you could also use erosion two completely because erosion two also has thermal erosion controls in the form of the shape settings right here. Erosion 2 is really a powerhouse when it comes to this because it can give you extremely realistic results within one node. However, you do need to give it a lot of care as it's kind of an ecosystem where everything ties in together and you don't really get to isolate one specific, you know, shape control here. So another way of getting a thermal shape is the thermal shaper node. Uh, yeah, quite obvious. The thermal shaper is actually more of a filter. Uh, it kind of uses math to calculate what the shape would look like. It's a very easy and quick way of getting that classic thermal shape with those sharp peaks and that classic triangular look. Distance, this might be a bit of a weird one. Uh, it is a very mathematical node, again, kind of a filter here, but I put it in here because you can get that cool triangular shape as well. I just think that this is a cool way of getting that shape. Um, and yeah, you can play around with it and see what you can get. Let's move down to the actual use cases. I'm gonna create a mountain here. I'm gonna add some hydraulic erosion and thermal erosion using erosion two and the shape controls. This will give us that classic, you know, triangular mountain look. We're gonna add some rock detail with sandstone. And now we'll just look at all the thermal two nodes and different settings, how it will affect this, this mountain right here. So we'll just start with the kind of basic settings here, a high strength, a 45 angle, no sediment removal, feature scale 15. It will remove a lot of the cool details that we had, like the micro details. However, we do get those nice, cool, sharp edges on our convexes. And yeah, it, it's a very nice effect. However, you're losing a bit of rock detail, right? In case you want to keep the rock detail and just have the actual sediment added on top of your terrain, you can use the max setting, the max blend mode down below. This will just add the extras we're getting, which is the sediment buildup and we will preserve our rock detail from the underlying layer. If we only want to see the effects of the erosion and not the actual sediment buildup, we'll just remove all the sediment. And this gives us this very cool, sharp look right here that we can then add more details on top of. Now, an accurate way of using this node in tangent with erosion two would be to use a slope mask to preserve some of the rock detail. So you can see here, I am removing all the sediment because I'll use erosion two to actually add very realistic talus flows. I'm keeping the feature skill 15, uh, the anastropia at zero to preserve as much detail. Maybe 50 would be a good angle to start at. And then we'll take the wear output and I'll auto level it just to keep it easy and visible. And we're gonna use that as the precipitation mask in erosion two, which is a new thing we have in Gaia 2.2. And in erosion two here, I will have the max filter mode enabled because I only want to add sediment. I don't want to have the actual erosion cut down on my terrain like so. I want to keep all that rock detail. I'm turning the duration up so we build up more sediment. I'm turning the down cutting from 0.25 to 0.1. This will minimize the amount of down cutting we're getting but still cut enough of the terrain off to actually create these talus flows. I'm turning off suspended load. I'm making sure the erosion skill is also quite small um, so we get you know, the talus in all of these little gullies. And then I am going to turn up the bed load and coarse sediment, find a good angle and have it there. As you can see, this works very nicely in conjunction with the thermal two node. We're getting the erosion, cutting down on the base layer terrain, making it look like the actual talus flows are coming from these, you know, are coming from this rocky stratification, making it look like these talus flows are really you know, the result of rock being broken off these uh, cool stratification details right here. So yeah, I hope this is a good introduction to Thermal 2 and the use cases of this node and just a better understanding of what thermal erosion does and what shape you get from it. Hope you guys will have a good time in Gaia 2.2 and thanks for watching.